the opposition of equal and wonderful enlightenment. Sutra, the first common sculptor of the flow as the Bodhisattvas first reach this point through compliance with practice. Their enlightenments intermingle. It is therefore called equal enlightenment. Commentary, the first common sculptor of the flow, this means that the first commons have already become Buddhas, but they culture the flow and appear in the world to rescue living beings. Thus, from the Buddha position, they come back along the Bodhisattva path in order to greet the Bodhisattva. That's what's meant by culturing the flow. The Bodhisattvas thus reach this point through compliance with the practice. The Bodhisattvas comply with the flow. This flow refers to going from an ordinary person to a hardship through bodhisattvahood and on to Buddhahood, which the bodhisattvas have not yet experienced at this point. So they are going along with the flow that leads to the Buddha's enlightened position. Now, they actually encounter the Buddha's the enlightenments intermingle. The enlightenment of the Buddhas and the enlightenment of the Bodhisattvas merge at this point. It is therefore called equal enlightenment. These Bodhisattvas are equal to the Buddha, but theirs is still not wonderful enlightenment. It is still only similar to the Buddha's enlightenment. Because at this level, they still have left one bit of ignorance that seems to be that of production. They still must destroy that, so ignorance is difficult to leave behind. Once they smash it, however, they will be Buddhas. When people claim to be Buddhas, I ask them, From where did you come? What path did you take? If they don't even know the name of the first position, have never seen the path that leads to the second position, and don't know how to get to the third position, then how can they have arrived at Buddhahood? They took a plane, perhaps? In that case, a rocket would have been even faster. I suspect that such people will never reach the Buddha position. Why not? It is because they say they are there when in fact they are not. Do they speak the truth? Or do they lie? They have not cultivated or done anything within the Buddha Dharma and yet they profess to be Buddhas. It just doesn't add up. How about those people who have practiced within the Buddha Dharma for decades and still are not Buddhas? Maybe those people who say they are Buddhas have affected some scientific means to get themselves there so, so fast. Sutra, Ananda, the enlightenment which encompasses the mind of dry wisdom through to the culmination of equal enlightenment is the initial attainment of the Vara mind. This constitutes the level of initial dry wisdom. Commentary, Ananda, the enlightenment which encompasses the mind of dry wisdom also called the initial vara mind and the level of dry wisdom through to the combination of equal enlightenment is the initial attainment of the vara mind. This refers to the later vara mind. This constitutes the level of initial dry wisdom of the later vara mind. The previous level of dry wisdom referred to the drying up of emotional love and desire. At that point, he had not yet joined with the first common drama water. Now, even though this later level of dry wisdom is more encompassing, he still has not yet joined the sea of wonderful adornments of the first common. So it's also referred to, a, uh, to as dry wisdom. However, it pertains to the later vital mind and is the, the final step. Sutra, thus there are totals of 12 single and grouped levels. At last, they reach wonderful enlightenment and accomplish the unsurpassed way. Commentary, thus there are totals of 12 single and grouped levels. There are seven single levels, initial dry wisdom, heat, some meat, patience, first in the world, equal enlightenment, wonderful enlightenment.
There are five grouped levels, the ten faiths, the ten dwellings, the ten conducts, the ten transferences, the ten graphs. Because each of these levels includes ten positions, they are classed as groups. Together, the seven single levels and the five groups make twelve. There are 54 positions from the initial dry wisdom to equal enlightenment. Some count the initial dry wisdom to the later Vara might as the 55th, but actually that level of dry wisdom is the same as equal enlightenment. At last, they reach wonderful enlightenment and accomplish the unsurpassed way. They come to the end of the path to wonderful enlightenment and accomplish the reward and the substance of wonderful enlightenment. They have accomplished Buddhahood. Sutra. At all these levels, they use vara contemplation of the ten profound analogies for the ways in which things are like an illusion. In Shamatha, they use the Thetskamwanza Vipashyana to cultivate them purely, to be satisfied to them and to gradually enter them more and more deeply. Commentary. At all these levels, they use a vara contemplation of the ten profound analogies for the ways in which things are like an illusion. These levels are the ones just described from the level of dry wisdom of the initial vara mind through the ten faiths, the ten dwellings, the ten conducts, the ten transferences, the ten grounds, and the four additional practices. They use the vara mind to cultivate with, to contemplate by. They contemplate how things are like an illusion. Illusion means that you say it is real, but it isn't. You say it's false, but it isn't. It's as I mentioned before. The Mairat practices he cultivates are but flowers in space. The Bodhimanda he sits in is like the moon in water and subduing the demonic armies. Mere reflections in a mirror, he does great deeds of the Buddha's word in a dream. The ten profound analogies are as follows. 1. All karma is like an illusion. You should look upon karmic obstacles as illusory, not real. 2. All dhammas are like a mirage. Sometimes in the spring you'll see what seems to be smoke rising, but when you approach the spot, you find that there's really nothing there at all. It's just a mirage. You should look upon all dhammas in the same way. 3. All physical bodies are like the moon in water. 4. All wonderful forms are like flowers in space. 5. All wonderful sounds are like echoes in a valley. 6. All Buddha lands are like Gandava cities. Basically, the Buddha lands are real, but you should look upon them as if they were but the cities of Gandharvas. 7. All deeds of the Buddha are like dreams. 8. The Buddha's body is like a reflection. 9. The reward body is like an image. 10. The Dharma body is like a transformation. You should not look upon any of these things are as real. You should never grasp nor reject these illusory states, that is, because everything is empty. You should not regard anything as actually existent. What is the meaning behind these ten profound analogies? They tell you not to be attached to anything at all. You have to put everything down. If you see through it and put it all down, then you will obtain self-mastery. In Shamatha, they use the first commands, Vipashyana, to cultivate them purely, to be certified to them, and to gradually enter them more and more deeply. Shamatha means stopping, and Vipashyana means contemplating. We are to cultivate the Dhamma door of stopping and contemplating. Vipashyana also means subtle, secret contemplation and illumination. Gradually, bit by bit, one progresses and enters into this purification and certification. Sutra Ananda, because they put to use the three means of advancement throughout all of them, 
they are well able to accomplish the 55 stages of the true body path. Commentary The three means of advancement have already been explained. They are getting rid of eating causes, cleaning up the proper nature, guarding against the manifestation of karma. The 55 stages are the 10 faiths, the 10 dwellings, the 10 conducts, the 10 transferences, the 4 additional practices, the 10 grounds equal enlightenment. Sutra, this manner of contemplation is called proper contemplation. Contemplation other than this is called Devon contemplation. Con commentary. This manner of contemplation is called proper contemplation. If you can look upon the triple world as upon flowers in space, if you can regard all this of the Buddha as if done in a dream, and if you rely on the three means of advancement in your cultivation, your contemplation is proper. If you can use the vital mind in your contemplation to make a subtle, secret contemplation and illumination as you pass through the 55 stages, then you are practicing proper contemplation. This is a proper cultivation of the drama of neither production nor extinction. Contemplation, other than this, is called Devon contemplation. If you don't cultivate this Dharma door, if you do not contemplate in this way, if you cultivate dramas subject to production and extinction, your contemplation is deviant. The name of the Sutra, Volume 7, Chapter 3. Sutra. Then Dhamma Prince Manjushri arose from his seat, and in the midst of the assembly, he bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, what is the name of this sutra and how should we and all living beings uphold it? Commentary at this point in the discussion. Dhamma Prince Manjushri arose from his seat and in the midst of the assembly, he bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, Bodhisattva Manjushri now has a question to ask. What is the name of this sutra and how should we and all living beings uphold it? Won't honored one, what name do you give to this sutra? How should we in this assembly and living beings of the future uphold it? How should we cultivate it? How should we offer up our conduct with regard to this sutra? Sutra, the Buddha told Manjushri, this sutra is called the Samhita Siddhantua Buddha and unsurpassed precious seal of the seal of the great Buddha and the pure, clear, ocean-like eye of the first commands of the ten directions. Commentary The Buddha told Manjushri, this sutra is called the Samhita Siddhantua Buddha and the unsurpassed precious seal of the seal of the great Buddha. This refers to the invisible summit, the crown of the Buddha's head, which poured forth a splendorous light. Siddhantua Buddha La is the great white canopy. There is nothing more revered, revered or honored than the unsurpassed precious seal. The precious seal is that of the Dharma king, the Buddha. The first name indicates how supreme the Suragama Mantra is. If people recite the Suragama Mantra, they are worthy of receiving the precious seal of the Dharma king. This sutra is also the pure, clear, ocean-like eye of the first commands of the ten directions. This refers to pure wisdom. The eye represents wisdom. Sutra. It is also called the cause for saving a relative, to rescue Ananda and the Vishuni nature, who is now in this assembly so that they obtain the body mind and enter the sea of pervasive knowledge. Commentary. It is also called the cause for saving a relative, to rescue Ananda. The Buddha was related to Ananda. They were cousins. He wanted to save Ananda from the difficulty he got into with Mantanji's daughter. 
He also rescued the Bishuni Netra, who is now in this assembly. The Bishuni Netra was the Mantanji's daughter. She was by now a fourth stage Arhat in the assembly. They obtained the Bodhi Mind and entered the sea of pervasive knowledge. These two people have attained levels of enlightenment. Pervasive knowledge is as in one of proper and pervasive knowledge, one of the titles of the Buddhas. Proper knowledge is knowing that the mind gives rise to the myriad dramas. Pervasive knowledge is knowing that the myriad dramas are only from the mind. Sutra it is also called the, the Tathagata secret cause of cultivation. His certification to the complete meaning. Commentary. It is also called the Tathagata secret cause. It has another name which indicates that it is the most secret Dharma draws of the first come one. It is the cause of his cultivation, his certification to the complete meaning. Through cultivation of it, one certifies to the fruition and fathoms the most fundamental principle. This is another name for this sutra. Sutra, it is also called the Great Pervasive Method of Wonderful Lotus Flower King, the Dhanani Mantra, which is the mother of all Buddhas of the Ten Directions. Commentary, it is also called the Great Pervasive Method. This is a drama. It is the greatest drama. It pervades the Ten Directions and is boundlessly vast. The Wonderful Lotus Flower King is an analogy for the Suragama Sutra. The Dharami Mantra, which is the mother of all Buddhas of the Ten Directions, refers to the Suragama Mantra. All the Buddhas of the Ten Directions are born from the Suragama Mantra. Dharami is a Sanskrit word which means to encompass and hold. It encompasses all Dharmas. It holds limitless meanings. Another meaning is that it encompasses the three commas of body, mouth, and mind so that no violations are made by them. With your body, you do not kill, steal, or lust. With your mind, you are not greedy, angry, or stupid. With your mouth, you do not indulge in low speech, harsh speech, lying, or gossip. You do not commit any of these ten evil deeds and it holds the limitless Dharma doors of all the Buddhas. That's another way to explain Dharani. Sutra, it is also called the foremost Suragama, sections and phrases for anointing the crown of the head and all Bodhisattvas, myriad practices. Commentary, the foremost Suragama, this is the first and foremost of durable dharmas. It is a strong and firm dharma. Sections and phrases for anointing the crown of the head refers to the Suragama mantra. If you recite it, your karmic obstacles will very quickly be eradicated. Very soon you will obtain wisdom. Earlier in his first Ananda set of it, the wonderfully deep dharani, the unmoving honored one, the foremost Suragama king, is seldom found in the world. It melts away my upside down thoughts gathered in a million compass, so I need an endure a Sankhya ends to obtain the Dharma body. The Suragama mantra can invisibly anoint you on the crown of the head and thereby eradicate your upside down thoughts that have gone on a limitless errand. There's no need to have to pass through three great Asangriya ends before you obtain the Dharma body. And all Bodhisattvas myriad practices are contained within this sutra. Sutra, thus you should, should you respectfully uphold it. Commentary, Ananda, you should rely on this Dharma in your cultivation. Thus should you respectfully uphold it.